What's going on guys? So this is going to be another video in my EE fundamentals series where I basically go over anything that I think will help you become a better electrical engineer. This is going to be a follow up to the previous video I did where I talked about electromagnetic inductance and Faraday's law and stuff like that. So maybe go check that one out if you haven't already. But a quick summary of, of you know, a key concept I went over is this equation here where the induced voltage in a wire uh, is proportional. And in this case, and I said in the real world, the way engineers utilize and manipulate this equation is you only focus on changing B, which is the strength of the magnetic field. Because in physics, in reality, what you can do is change the area affected by it. But uh, just for practicality and, and manufacturing engineering purposes, right, it's easiest to try to manipulate the B variable. And that's, that's in part due to the uh, behavior of inductors whenever you run current through them. Um, whenever you apply a voltage across an inductor, the current will uh, linearly ramp up. So and then that creates a changing magnetic field on its own. So you basically have to do no work there to create that. Um, yeah, so this is basically an abridged in real life version of that equation. So now you probably might have, have you know left that video and not been very satisfied because you're like, okay, great, you still left us, you know, at the end of the day you left us with an equation and I'm not a physicist and we don't really care much, engineers don't care much about equations unless we can actually do something with them. So this is where, um, this is a good segue to an introduction to what is known as the coupled inductor. And um, so here I have a note, it says, uh, another name for the coupled inductor is a flyback transformer because it's these two go hand in hand. There's there's a we'll talk about this later as well in this video that uh, there's something known as a flyback converter. And so these things were basically made for flyback uh, converters. Fly, you know, coupled inductors were are like a, a pivotal piece in this. Um, so here I have a couple pictures of some flyback transformers, aka coupled inductors. This is a pretty common. I'll say this one on the left is a very modern one. Any any modern if you go to any um like transformer manufacturer you'll probably see pictures like this on there well the one on the right this one's very old in fact i think the name flyback it originates from i believe a power supply that was used in like a television set and those you think about old old television sets that are like really thick in the back you know they had, they had a lot of junk in the trunk they use big bulky um flyback transformers like this one right here you see on the right um so then here I have on, on the right, I have like a, what you'll see if, if you ever spot this in a schematic, this is, this is just a symbol for a coupled inductor. In this case, it's like a, a flyback transformer. So just know that that's how you spot them. Um, so the basic anatomy of a coupled inductor, AKA flyback transformer is you'll have your primary winding, which is the part of the winding that generates the magnetic field. So it's this part on the left right here. So you'll basically have the current will be, or the voltage drop will be across the primary side and then the current will be ramping up through that. And that's what generates the magnetic field. The secondary winding is what I have here, I have absorbs the energy from the, the changing magnetic field. So the, the way you kind of think of these is like, kind of like a receiver and a transmitter. Think of like Wi-Fi or like a Bluetooth, a wireless signal, you have something that Tran, uh, transmit the signal and something that receives the signal. So that's a good way to, to kind of look at it is, is you have the, the secondary winding is physically um, inside the magnetic field of the primary, if that makes any sense. Um, and we can even, we'll go back to this picture. So well, actually here, we'll finish talking about basic anatomy first. So the magnetic core is just something that is utilized in order to for efficiency purposes. So like in this picture, this this little like O shaped looking thing right here, that's like a square, a square circle thing, if that makes any sense. Right here, that is what is the core. And this picture on the left, you can't see it because it's covered up. Um, but it's just it's usually like a piece of like iron material, or something like that. And we'll even, we can look at, there's some cores I have down here we'll talk about in a second. But basically it's just supposed to help with efficiency, generating and transmitting the magnetic field. You'll pick a different core, um, depending on a couple of reasons. At the end of the day, you don't really have to worry about that. So just know, yeah, know the core is just a thing that goes on the inside and it's sort of just like a, a scaffolding for which you can wrap the wires around. 
Then you have something known as the auxiliary winding. It's also noted as the bias winding in this diagram right here. And just note, um, the only thing you have to worry about is that this is for circuit design purposes. Think of it as another output. So like you only have, you have one input, which is it puts into the primary and then you'll get act, you'll actually get output voltages in the secondary and the bias windings. So that's, that's something you need to know, I guess. So you have one input and you can have multiple outputs. I've never actually heard of multiple input inputs before. And I don't know if that would actually work. Um, okay. So now we'll talk about the construction. So the way these things are constructed, and this is going to refer to mainly the one on the left, because you'll see it doesn't really make sense with the one on the right. And we'll talk about that. Don't worry. So the secondary and or auxiliary winding is first wrapped around the core. So let's just take a look at this picture on the left for just for demonstration purposes. And so you see how the wires is wrapped around the actual core. So that's what's going on on the inside on, on this one on the left as well. You just can't see it because again, it's covered up by a bunch of insulative material. So first you wrap something or you wrap the secondary, you start, you start with the secondary winding and or auxiliary winding. A lot of those are wound together um, or in the same quote unquote layer, you could say. Um, so you start by wrapping those around the core. Then you'll go with some type of insulative material. Like if you see this yellow stuff right here, and there's like so a lot of times there's like, it's like a, a clearish tape, like it looks like scotch tape actually. And that's wrapped around the wires that are wrapped wrapped around the this wrapped around the primary and auxiliary windings. So you have like bare copper wire wrapped around the core, and then you'll have like scotch tape looking stuff wrapped around the bare copper wire. And then you go, the primary winding is wrapped around the insulative material, followed by more insulative material around that. So just under this yellow layer is the primary winding. And the reason we do this, right, if you recall back to the previous video, is the magnetic field from the primary winding or the inductor is generated inside the coil. So we're basically putting one of the coils inside the other coil because the magnetic field is happening all inside here. Um, so that's why you want your receiver to be inside your coil, basically. Now, when I just said that, you're probably like, okay, that makes no sense because these things aren't anywhere near each other. And this is kind of the part we'll get to is the purpose of the, uh, the cores themselves. And this gets into some laws of physics, physics and stuff. I don't know. It, it has to do with magnetic field lines and a lot of stuff like that. And I'll say it's way beyond the scope of this video. You don't need to know it. Only thing you need to know is that because of magnetism and physics these cores are somehow able to transmit the help they help transmit the magnetic field from the primary to the secondary actually in this case i should note that this is the primary on the right side and that's the secondary on the left side if that's hopefully that's not confusing to you um but that's that's why you need to know that's why the reason these are able to be separated is just because of this core and magnetism so that's that's kind of how you need to know it but the important part you need to know is that is that the primary is, is just transmitting its magnetic field energy to the secondary. Okay. Um, so that, so in real life though, this, this one on the left will definitely have the primary wrapped physically around the secondary. Okay. So next we'll get into the understanding of the different cores. So you again, if you just heard my explanation for that, you'll probably maybe be a little bit confused, like why these are completely different than the construction I just described. So if you look at this picture right here on the left, that actually would, you can kind of see if you put two of these together, it kind of looks like something like this maybe, um, or it starts to. And so basically what I'll kind of say about the cores, if you have different core types for different reasons, I'm not hundred percent sure. Again, this goes way beyond the scope of what you need to know in order to design and develop these. Um, the only thing I'll say is that the one on the left probably has an E core. That's the most common I've seen. And the one on the right, the one on the right is an old school type one. Okay. And it's going to use, they call them like C cores or something like that. Um, but like I said, I see your different shapes because physics, that's all you need to know. And I think maybe your application could matter a little bit too, depending on which kind of, what kind of, what currents you're running through the primary, um, that voltages you're trying to output on the secondary side, stuff like that, I think matters, but. I will say also the core type will also affect your winding anatomy. Like the, I, I would have, I would say something like, but the actual shape of the cores, um, that that might be selected because of the the output voltages you're using and stuff like that. So, 
that's just something you need you need to know or you can it's it's helpful to know i should say um but yeah at the end of the day and i'll relieve any stress you may have if you're worried like oh you know i still don't i feel like i know very much about how do i even go about designing these i mean it's very simple at the end of the day what you're going to end up doing is you're going to email some applications engineer at a manufacturing place like coil craft or worth electronics say hey here are my parameters you're literally give them here's my input voltage my output voltage here's my turns ratio a couple other parameter uh, parameters and he's gonna say okay he'll take care of the rest or she'll take care of the rest for you um so you really don't need to worry about any of this it's just it's kind of helpful to know in case you ever because if you go and google on the internet you'll see some of this stuff you'll probably i know whenever i did i was wondering a lot about what was going on with all this so i'm just trying to shed a little bit of light on this um yeah so basically the reviews and key takeaways if you remember anything from this video it's that basically the couple inductor is how we manipulate this physical equation so at first i give you this this physical equation that describes just reality and the laws of physics and then what an engineer basically does is take the physical phenomenon and says how can we manipulate it and this is basically the physical embodiment of this equation right here is is what this thing looks like okay so i hope it's i hope it's nice to have something a lot more tangible that you can you know physically hold one of these in your hand um so yeah and then i'll say i'll leave this leave this as a great segue into the future video that i'll do which is this is a key component in what is known as a flyback transformer so basically we're going to go even a step further and say okay so this is just one component now we're going to see how it works in conjunction with some other components in order to actually do something now um because you know again we're we we've come a long way we've gone from you know you know a physics equation to actually something physical you can hold in your hand and now let's get, let's see if we can actually make something you know practical out of this, something that has a utility because uh, at the end of the day who really cares what this is if you can't actually do anything with it um so yeah, um, as per usual, have any questions about anything, leave a comment below, any tutorials over anything, or any electrical engineering questions you want me to answer, um, leave a comment below. If you made it this far through the video, thank you very much, I really appreciate it.